Hello, greetings, my friends. Mari Smith here coming to you live from a glorious sunny Friday evening. We are going to go through the massive updates from Facebook this week uh, from the two day F8 conference, developer conference. So I have been on the road for about 10 days. I literally just got back late last night and I have been absorbing as much as I possibly could with all the Facebook updates this week, real time, I managed to catch Mark Zuckerberg's opening keynote on day one. And of course I have been reading as much as I possibly can and immersing myself into all of the changes. And this morning I was a guest on social media examiners, uh, talk show. So what I have prepared for you friends is a slide deck, a pretty comprehensive slide deck. And I'm going to share my desktop and I'm going to walk through some of these changes. So if you're tuning in live right now, welcome, welcome, welcome. I know it's odd to be going live on a Friday evening, but there you have it. It's about 6:24 on Pacific time. If you are watching the replay, welcome, lovely to have you here. And you can go ahead and host a watch party by all means, take this video and just press that little button and you can host a watch party in your own private group on your personal timeline or on your business page. And if you got questions, let me know. I'm happy to take questions. Great to see you all here. Hi, yeah. Greetings. I know I've missed you all. It's been a while. <laughs> yeah, I know if it's and if it's tomorrow. See there, I see some of my Australian friends here. Hi, Lisa. <laughs> mm. I had a wonderful time at social media camp in Victoria, BC, followed by a wonderful visit with my mom and um, in the Kootenays. And then I went on down to Salt Lake City to keynote the Everything Food Conference, which is still going on right now. But meanwhile, let's do this. I'm going to go and dive right in because there's no time to waste. Here's what I have prepared for you. My Facebook F8 updates, what marketers need to know. And uh, I'm going to walk through as many of these changes as I can. Let me just close down my little snagit over there. And uh, then I will go ahead and put all this onto a blog post and I'll embed the slides over there and put a whole bunch of links and just make it all simple and clear for you. It's a pretty exciting update on the surface. I must say, I thought there wasn't a whole lot of changes. It looked somewhat cosmetic. I thought, you know, maybe this is just a same old Facebook with a different coat of paint, <laughs> but you'll see as we dive in video is still a very, a very big focus. And you'll see that I am delighted to team up with my good friends at wave.video. I have been an ambassador for wave going into my third year now. And wave.video is actually the easiest, simplest way to create professional videos for Facebook and Instagram and all social channels. But I use predominantly Facebook and Instagram for those two, uh, to, to make beautiful videos, um, square or portrait or landscape or Facebook cover. Um, in fact, I think I have a little screenshot here. I do. I have this wonderful little screenshot and, uh, let me just move my camera. So it's not on top of there. And you can see, actually, this is a screenshot of wave where you can actually make story size videos, square videos, horizontal, vertical, you name it, uh, hundreds of millions of, uh, royalty free assets, as well as uploading your own very, very easy editor. You can add stickers and gifts and it is amazing. Oh, and by the way, it is free. The wave has a new free forever plan. You just go to wave.video and you can sign up for free and you can create 15 second videos for free and post them over onto Facebook or they have Facebook or uh, Twitter or YouTube. But if you want to pay like $10 a month, $9 a month, if you pay annually, then you can do a minute long video. All right. So I'm teaming up with wave.video to bring you this fabulous update from Facebook's F8 two day conference this year, this year, this week, it's an annual conference and this is the update. All right. The future, the future of Facebook. That's what we're going to be talking about. Let's dive in. All right, move that up there. Well, Facebook's new focus, as you may have known or may have seen, uh, Zuckerberg actually published a 3,200 word privacy manifesto back on March, March 6th. And that actually was a big pivot point. Facebook actually, uh, it was a new era. It was really entering the dawning of a new era on March 6th when Zuck published that. Um, I just saw a quick question on, on, uh, wave from Carrie Buck. Hi, Carrie. No uh, mobile app yet for wave, but stay tuned because wave is coming with a mobile app this year. So that's going to be awesome. Thanks for that. All right. So the new focus is absolutely about privacy. Zach has said 
you know, pretty much most of this year, the first quarter of the year, big change is coming. And this is a screenshot of Zach uh, on Monday, uh, Tuesday. Tuesday just passed, April 30th, up there in Palo Alto, giving the opening keynote of the annual F8 developer conference. And Zach and team are just going all in on this conversation around privacy. And you'll see as I progress through the slides here that I have for you that there's good reason for it. There's believable reason for it, this major pivot to privacy. And that is just because that's where all the activity seems to be moving towards Messenger and WhatsApp and Instagram Direct and small groups and stories and sharing your stories with a small group of people, not necessarily everybody. So that's all believable that that is where communication and commerce is going. There's a new term we were talking about this morning on a social media examiner's show called private commerce. You probably heard of social commerce where you can buy and sell uh, articles, obviously uh, goods, products, services, products, and primarily retail products like with the Instagram checkout, you've got the shoppable tags. And so that's social commerce, but then private commerce is gonna be a major area where we'll see a big, um, uptick as the year progresses in particular where you're actually purchasing inside of messenger and purchasing inside of whatsapp so private to commerce so at the same time we can look at this screenshot here and this image of zuck and coming right out the gate and going look the future is private and we can say okay a big part of this is in response to how much trouble Facebook got into with all of the data privacy breaches and, uh, you know, government potential regulation, testifying before Congress and just scandal after scandal. And Facebook's reputation has really taken a hit in the last couple of years. And so this is Zuck's response. He's basically saying to the world that Facebook's taking responsibility and this is their shift, their pivot to privacy. This is the answer. So. This is a, a couple of screenshots from the live stream and um, you can see that on Zuck's page or Facebook's page where they have the whole stream uh, of the, on the, the, F, the Facebook developer Facebook page. And Zuck said, privacy gives us the freedom to be ourselves. Mm -hmm. It's easier to feel like you belong. I caught a screenshot <laughs> with his eyes closed. Easier to feel like you belong when you're part of smaller communities amongst your closest friends. Now that's in the context of Zuck saying about how there's been a lot of change and where it's hard to feel like you belong and to find your real true purpose when you are part of, um, you know, 2.3 billion people. And so that's the big focus of these, uh, you know, the groups. And so that's what Zuck really wants us to do. Focus on groups. So he talked about, you might've heard this before where Zuck talks about, in real life, there are public spaces, which he calls town squares, right? So everything's public there, whatever you say, and it's all public. And we all, everybody has a private space. We have our living rooms. And then the digital equivalent or the digital, you know, in the digital world, if you will, he, he says uh, our digital lives, we actually need both. You want a town square, but you also want your private living room. And so Facebook and Instagram historically, right up, you know, 50, for full, 15 full years have have been creating the digital equivalent of that town square, right? So now they're going, oh, pivot, let's go and create living rooms. So uh, Zach said, it's no surprise that the fastest ways that we're all communicating online is private messaging, small groups, stories, right? So those three main areas as businesses, as marketers, you wanna be really paying attention. We've been talking about this pretty much all year. We're in month five now of the year. I've been including this in all of my different keynotes and presentations and workshops throughout the year so far, uh, really digging into small groups, stories, and private messaging. All right, so definitely a big area, definitely a big area to be focusing on. So first we're gonna start with Messenger and this is actually Facebook's own uh, order, uh, for the first part anyway, when you, when you see there, um, let me just do this and then show you over here. If I pull up another groups, their news, if I go to the Facebook news, you may have, you may have seen this already, but it's, it's actually pinned to the top. Um, but you've got day one and then day two, and that's just newsroom.fb.com. And if I click on day one, this is a big part of what I'm going through a little bit of day two as well, but mostly day one. And if uh, this is, you know, Zach, um, on stage here, obviously talking about doing the opening keynote. 
And you see how, again, everything Facebook does, everything Facebook does is, is strategic and intentional, right? Nothing's by accident necessarily, except when they move fast and break things and they break too many things and then they have to go back and fix them. <laughs> I jest, but you know what I mean? But I'm, I'm pointing out that they put Messenger first, right? That tells us something, that tells us something. And this is actually Asha Sharma. She's the director of Messenger. She took over from, from uh, David Marcus. And um, so back to my slides, Messenger, uh, actually I have that picture right here. And Asha, she was first up right after Zuck. She took stage right after Zuckerberg's opening keynote and they dived right into Messenger, the consumer product. So let's take a look at what they talked about is speed, faster and lighter. Is what, um, somebody knows this probably better than I, but it's, isn't it 30 megabytes or something crazy like that? I don't remember if they put it in here or not, but the size of it is just super, super light, super light, super fast, wanting it to be, in fact, I saw somewhere that they talked about wanting Messenger to be um, the, the number one, you know, messaging app in the world, really fast, the fastest and lightest and best. So obviously you've got WhatsApp, which is owned by Facebook because uh, it dominates globally. Uh, but in America, you think Messenger, in North America, Messenger is the number one messaging app, but it actually competes with uh, Apple uh, iMessage. So uh, that's always interesting to watch. Completely re-engineer re the app. That's going to roll out later this year. We don't, we don't have it yet, but we're seeing screenshots and you're seeing what it's going to look like. And what this um, Asha, uh, the uh, director of Messenger, she says that they're actually building, they're building a social network around messaging versus what they've kind of historically done is to build um, messaging around a social network, right? They're doing it the other way around, starting with the uh, messaging first. So a messenger desktop app is coming. You might've heard that it's Windows and Mac OS. Why would Facebook do that? Well, just to be able to help people to, you know, navigate, it's just not as clunky. It's going to be faster and lighter, few new features in there, group video calls, and you can collaborate on projects. They said, you know, um, quote unquote, and they're testing that now. And it's going to be rolling out global globally this year, that, that messenger desktop app. That'll be neat because I use messenger a lot on desktop when I'm at home and I'm not traveling all over the place. <laughs> then I do use my mobile mostly. So this is a quick screenshot of, um, what it's going to look like, uh, on desktop. Yeah. Cause I'm not, they've got it embedded here inside of a, um, laptop. Uh, it's always interesting too, like I just mentioned earlier, I always find it fascinating. The examples that Facebook even chooses, the um, people, the models, <laughs> and the real people that they choose to showcase, that always tells me something, you know, if it's a younger audience and more kind of millennial, whatever it might be, or Gen Z even, it's like they're really trying to attract a younger audience, but also making a Facebook really still appealing very much to a more mature audience, mature being like 30 and up. <laughs> those of us that fit that category. A couple of things, and uh, you guys have access to all of these uh, information, documents, spreadsheets, uh, I mean, um, infographics. Um, this is interesting. I just saw um, a comment there. Anya, Anya, I know, number one in the world. I don't know if they'll be at number one in the world, but certainly combined with WhatsApp. Between WhatsApp and then they're adding an Instagram direct, so all three um, together, Messenger as well. But right here where they've, these, these are Facebook's emojis and they're pointing the finger right here to Messenger currently is the second most popular iOS app of all time behind Facebook. So that's kind of interesting. Um, but some good, good stats on here. Messenger plus video. So watch video together. This really caught my attention because this is exactly like a watch party but it's like private, right? So it's a private watch party. You'll notice too that Facebook's bringing back um, a, a, a tighter integration between the regular app and Messenger, right? So inside of your phone, you can just easily navigate between the two apps like we used to. Well, until they, you know, back in the day, it was all baked into one app and then they separated out Messenger. But there's a reason why, you know, Facebook's bringing in Messenger much more integrated with the main app again, is to be able to bring in this watching videos together. They're testing that now. It's going to roll out globally later this year. So now this is a screenshot from their update. And there's literally saying a way to watch together. When you're not together with friends or family in your physical living room, Messenger will now let you discover and watch videos from Facebook together in real time. So, and then this part here about seamlessly sharing a video from the Facebook app on Messenger and then inviting others. 
while you're on a video chat. So this is really exciting news to me because that again, as marketers, as business owners, you're still doing a lot of video. Hopefully remember Facebook live gets six times the engagement than regular video and, um, really focusing and going all in on video and creating like your 15 second teaser videos. As I mentioned, those are one of my favorites to create. And when you look at my own video uh, feed, you'll see our, you know, video tab on my Facebook page that I like to do uh, from time to time, a 15 second teaser video that then drives over to either a longer video, possibly on YouTube. That's a great way to do it. Um, or driving to a blog post. And that's a great way to get traffic to your site is to always start with a video, but then just make it short. People are there to consume short form video. You can also do a mix of long form, which is going to be three minutes, three minutes, three minutes and 20 seconds thereabout, and then your Facebook lives. Those are some good categories to do for your videos. So, and then of course, being able to encourage your audience to do watch parties, and then eventually we'll be able to encourage our audience to do these private watch parties too, and be able to discover them. Uh, inside of Messenger, you're also gonna have a new dedicated space. It's not rolled out just yet, but you'll have this new space where you can discover the stories and messages among your friends and close friends and family rolling out later this year. And uh, Facebook says close connections are built on messaging. Isn't it interesting how they've said that, right? Close connections are built on messaging, which is why we're making it easier for you to find the content from the people you care about the most. So we'll see that dedicated space later this year and share snippets, that, AKA stories. <laughs> They're really pushing stories a lot, as you all know. By the way, last Wednesday, also I was on the road, was uh, Facebook's quarter one earnings call. And I listened into that as well as the Q and a, I love the Q and a part. There's always some real diamonds in, in there when you listen closely. And, um, they kind of like just quietly announced, uh, or revealed, it wasn't even an announcement, but revealed that stories, daily active users, Instagram stories. We already knew that that has 500 million. Okay. So Instagram by itself, 500, 500 million daily active users. Last we heard, Facebook stories had 300 million daily active users. Well, all of a sudden over the span of maybe six or eight months, Facebook stories has 500 million daily active users as well. Now they lump together messenger as well. So that's Facebook as well as messenger combined has 500 million daily active users. And I don't know about you guys. We were talking about this on one of my, my posts earlier this week, but I have a feeling that a lot of those Facebook stories are coming from being automatically posted from Instagram and, or where you just check the button where you're making a post on your wall and it's automatically making it into a story as well. Plus actually someone was pointing out that whenever you're seeing memories, right? And oftentimes the first thing you see on your mobile newsfeed is a memory. And you, when you hit share, you can only share it to stories. So it's like Facebook's automatically creating their own story growth, which I think is quite funny. <laughs> so yeah, Facebook stories jumped indeed. Hi Adam. And, and then one more stat is WhatsApp status. They call it right. Those of you that use WhatsApp, my friends around the world, I use WhatsApp, uh, for specifically for clients and friends who are outside the U S predominantly, uh, I like WhatsApp groups for chatting, like chat groups, uh, but you've got your status. And so they, they don't call it stories there. It's called status. And that too has 500 million daily active users. So really, really interesting. Yeah, I, I did hear that Jason. Yeah. And I've got it in my slides coming up. I did. I'm going to cover that. Actually, I think it's coming up right on this next slide here. So, so good, good eye, Jason, a few new things that we need to know about, about, um, messenger as businesses. And I'm just watching my camera cause it's right over the top. Let me move it down there. <laughs> uh, this is exciting to me having lead generation templates inside of ads manager. This is very, very similar to lead ads. Those of you that have already tried lead ads, wonderful tool because it's already pre-populated and the person sees the ad in their feed and their email and their name or whatever collection uh, information you're collecting is automatically there. So this is kind of nifty. Actually, this is exciting to me to have a lead generation ad inside of uh, messenger. And then two new things is being able to book an appointment, which, you know, you could kind of do with a chat bot. If you had a, 
If you already had a chat bot deployed on your page, you might be able to sync it up with a calendaring system, but this is going to just make it much cleaner and more simpler. I thought it was interesting. The examples that Facebook gave car dealerships, stylists, or cleaning services was the three examples they gave for making appointments. Of course, anybody that makes appointments can use this system. And then as uh, Jason Demo just pointed out, indeed changes to chatbot broadcast. Now, as of April 30th, which is just Tuesday past, we already knew that there was that change coming where you had to get uh, permission at the page level. So pages must be approved in order to send a broadcast to your chatbot subscribers. And starting April 30th, which just passed, right? Uh, approved with the page level subscription messaging feature in order to use the broadcast API. So I just mentioned that. Um, and my good friend, Larry Kim, who's the founder and CEO of Mobile Monkey, uh, let me just grab one of his posts because that was really, uh, a really informative. Larry sent me that earlier today. Yeah, this is helpful. So if you're like going, what, what are you talking about, Mari? What's this got to do with? Uh, this is a great, great, um, very inform informative post to read up on the messenger changes. And I'll pop that in here for you. Uh, and actually, let me just share my screen so you can see what I'm doing. This is a, a blog post on Mobile Monkey. <laughs> and I love how they have their little avatar. Look at this wee monkey, he's freaking out. <laughs> the monkeys are freaking out. Um, massive change, massive change in Facebook Messenger policies. It is pretty massive. And you know what? I've been having a lot of private dialogues with some of my friends. Shout out to Molly Mahoney. Um, because the truth is, um, I, put, I put a slide into my keynote um, as long as like last year, I remember I was keynoting traffic and conversion 2018. It was February, I think February last year. And I had this one slide and it's just like the giant messenger logo, right? And it comes up and it says messenger. And then I hit the button and it comes up and it says marketers may ruin messenger. <laughs> I have had my concerns all along because I think a lot of mass uh, marketers are treating messenger just like another channel and to do broadcast and to do push marketing and to just treat it like email and make it one way and it's really no bueno. It's not, not the way to go. It's no good. So, um, it's about dialoguing. It's about being more intimate. It's about having these shorter, simpler, cleaner, uh, conversations. It's much more informal and not doing big, giant, long winded uh, broadcasts. And so that's what I think that just a few people may have ruined it for others, but I'm saying ruined it, not ruined it. I just, I really do genuinely appreciate that Facebook is making it much more rigorous about who can send these broadcasts and who can't, because you're always going to get the opportunist marketer who's going to come along and go, Ooh, you know, I can spam a bunch of people and maybe I'll make some sales <laughs> anyway. So. Um, yes. All right. So that's on messenger. Any questions on that? Let me know friends. I'm going to switch gears and talk about groups because that was indeed the next, was it the next one? When, uh, oh no, actually they went right in to talk about WhatsApp. I've got WhatsApp in my slides. I, I'm actually going to talk about groups next, but again, if we go back to everything that Facebook does is very strategic and well thought out. So in their announcement, they went messenger, then WhatsApp and then into Facebook. They put Facebook third, right? Even though Facebook is their biggest platform by far, but um, they put it after Messenger and after WhatsApp. I'm gonna talk about groups now. So really exciting news um, for businesses. There's gonna be prominent positioning on Facebook's design, the new design. Um, Oh, what am I saying there? Oh, next sexual. I'm, I'm going to talk about that more in a, in a section coming up. <laughs> but uh, in addition, I have a few other little nuggets for you that are not necessarily part of the F8. I saw this reach stats and the boost button inside of my group on Wednesday. I was in the middle of teaching a Facebook marketing workshop uh, for the Everything Food Conference up there in Salt Lake City. 
and I had put a post into one of my groups, my inner circle, and I had my phone up on the screen. I'm showing my phone and, and sure enough, I saw reach stats and I saw the boost button. Now, about 18 months ago, I had the boost button in one of my groups and I knew Facebook was testing it back then. So they've circled back quite a while later and they're beginning to test the boost button. I know some people might have that, but the reach stats really caught my eye. And I wish I'd taken a screenshot because I swear I went back later and it wasn't there. It also did not show on desktop. So it was a little temporary uh, uh, sneak preview of coming attractions, reach stats and the boost button coming to groups. And that's definitely a group that was managed by my page. I doubt necessarily that they'll be from personally managed pages, but we'll see. Uh, all the more reason to have a, a group that's managed by your page. And get this. Ooh, how exciting is this? This is also not. This this whole section right here is a kind of um, uh, updates and news that I've, I've uh, gathered up for you. It's not part of F8, but uh, because we're doing a, a wonderful update here on, on everything Facebook, I thought I would go ahead and include these ones. So this is really, really exciting, the custom audiences. Um, and I'll give you a screenshot. And those of you that do group marketing, this one we should all be practically drooling over. <laughs> Here is a screenshot. When you go in to create custom audiences inside of your ads manager or business manager, and you can see right here highlighted Facebook group, you will be able to create a custom audiences audience from your group. Okay. That's, that's not, you can't, you can't, you can't create a custom audience based on somebody else's group or a group that you just happen to be a member of. It has to be your group, right? Just the same as your page. You're not going to create a custom audience based on someone else's page or someone else's you know, um, starter audience. So shout out to my good friend, Sally Hendrick. She's part of my inner circle and she uh, gave us this screenshot. Uh, it's act actually, she confirmed it's one of her clients says so she doesn't have it yet herself. I don't have it either. So which is why I'm borrowing her screenshot. So you can create custom audiences of your group members and you can advertise directly to them. A lot of people already have this feature. She's saying now I would imagine because we can create lookalike audiences. Oops. Let me uh, take my camera off of Sally's face there. There we go. Shout out to Sally. Um, because we can create lookalike audiences from any custom audience, what I also think is exciting is that we can probably create a lookalike audience based on our group members what? and then, and then, and then, you know, expand and advertise beyond that, which I think is really, really exciting. Yeah. Those are the kind of little things that us marketers get excited about that are not necessarily part of the, you know, big, broad, uh, F8 announcement or, you know, quarter earnings announcements or whatever else. So yeah, really looking forward to that. I hope they roll this out to, to a lot more folks. Yeah, that's interesting. That's interesting. I'm seeing some great comments here. Great comments. I love it. Hiya, Ed. It's always, always great to have you here. Uh, Ed is saying, speaking of groups and stories that there's now, um, the ability to share a story to multiple groups at a time. You know, I think I saw a screenshot of that. I haven't tried it. I might actually have it cause I know I have the new Facebook. So, uh, yeah, that's pretty neat. That's, that's pretty neat. You see, it's just like, <laughs> I would say for years I've been saying, well, whatever, two years that hashtag resistance is futile. If like people, people are still like, I hate groups. I don't want to use groups. What are I don't, groups? Excuse me. I don't mean groups. I mean, um, stories. I don't know what groups are. I, I, I'm still saying groups. I'm looking at the word groups. I don't know what stories are. I don't want to use them. They're too confusing. They just disappear. Why would I want to use stories? And it's like, nope, people hashtag resistance is futile. You have to use stories. <laughs> oh, goodness gracious. Anyway, those of you asking, I'm using uh, Ecamm, Ecamm Live to uh, broadcast, uh, which I absolutely love. It's so easy to use. It's for Macs, only for Macs. Um, all right, so back to my presentation here. So let's shift gears now. We're going to go to the new design. I started with groups because that is what it is, is a predominantly uh, uh, groups is really, really featured front and center. And that, I'm um, just, my camera's over the top of it. So I'll move it. It's actually called FB5. And Zuckerberg explained at F8 why they called it FB5, because it is actually the fifth major design, only the fifth in their 15 years of existence, right? 15 years of existence that this is the fifth major change they've made. And this is what it looks like on desktop. So you're it's, several things about this and you, you might've seen this, you might've discussed it already. Um, but I'm just pointing out a few things. Number one, what stands out is incredible white space, right? It's very white, clean, pure, pristine. They've also revamped their logo and they got new colors. If you look up the very top left where my cursor is, 
It's kind of a much lighter, more kind of turquoisey blue with a gradient. They've gotten rid of that telltale, telltale kind of black, it's blue, dark blue uh, bar at the top. On both desktop and mobile, what we're looking at right here is the new desktop design. I already have the new mobile design. Some of you uh, might already, have, whoopsies, might already have it as well. Um, and let me just do this because I can. <laughs> I'm going to share my phone. Um, like that. And I'll just go like this, it'll make it easier. There you go. Uh, so I had I, some of you know those my friends here in the US if you already have uh, you might already have this uh, uh, Brand new design on mobile with the clean white space groups front and center and you see at the very top here We now have oh, that's too funny actually see Facebook knows that we're talking about them seven hours ago You know, I could swear that they already joined that uh, they already updated that see it's funny because I love it when we discover things real time because exactly as we're talking about, right? Look at what's taking up my whole dang screen here. Holy moly. So first of all, at the very top, like I say, white space. No more dark blue bar, white space, and Facebook's shiny new, slightly redesigned logo with a much lighter color. It's basically them saying, look, we're cleaning up our act. <laughs> but what you can also see that's flashing, flashing where my cursor is. This is just quick time I'm using to share my phone screen. So you see the little play thing there, that's it. But you see, I mean, you couldn't get more in your face, right? They're actually drawing my attention to it with moving animated little images and flashing colors, right? It's like, I can't even hardly go any further. Oh, and I've just tapped on that and I've moved. But at the same time, you saw that little <laughs> flashing, like, come and check out groups, Mari. <laughs> anyway, there's the big F right there. I've got those on C first. If you don't use C first, I highly recommend you do. And that's with the wee blue star there. And all you do, if you want to see anything first, you just tap the wee stars, excuse me, the wee uh, dots. My brain's just fuzzy. <laughs> I'm getting my words all mixed up tonight, but it's all good. Let's see. So see where it says stop seeing Facebook business first. Um, you would see C first. If you're not seeing someone first page or profile, that's where you tap it. And you can have up to 20, but it, it really doesn't give you all 20. Um, let's see. So as I scroll down here, I got a few people on C first. Of course, they've always got their ad in there. Hey, medical medium. I love him. I got him on C first. There's Facebook on C first. Miley Cyrus. Interesting. Um, but let me tap on groups because that's where they wanted me to go, right? They're flashing away on that. So what this is now, this is your own personalized feed. So it's basically almost like a brand new news feed or, you know, updates feed just from groups that you're a member of. Okay. And so then also what you can do is at the top, they want you to just look at your own groups or discover or create. Now, if I go discover, this is where, again, you're going to want to really have active groups connected to your page. If you don't already, this is a great strategy as a marketer. And so they're going to suggest them for you. And apparently they're getting really better at, at suggesting Oh, you can go see all, you can obviously search. Oh, actually it's even giving me categories to search there. Those are already pre-populated and then uh, create, they even want you to create a group. So big, big, big emphasis on groups, of course. Um, let's see, I think that's all for the uh, mobile for right now. Um, let's just do that and then we'll go back to my desktop. Now, what I wanna do also is I actually have a little video to play for you that's uh, from Facebook that shows you the desktop version of what I just showed you on my own, my own, um, uh, oh good, got an entire screen, okay, perfect. So so if I go over here and I hit next and this one here, this will be a video, I'm gonna play this video for you. So just watch, there's no sound I don't think, but, uh, and it takes a second for the cursor, just watch the cursor. Actually, let me just um, make my video super small so I'm not sitting on top of it. Put her over down there, there we go. All right, now let's play this video and you'll see what the newly designed desktop Facebook is going to look like when it rolls out later this year to everybody. Here it goes, see the little hand? Straight to groups. So we're looking at groups. We're looking at what we just saw similar on my mobile. There's marketplace, front and center. 
There's your own profile. By the way, now let me pause this. I got to pause. I'm going to back up because I want to, I want to pause for a second on this person's profile. There's a number of things I think could be different unless we're just scrolled down, but it looks to me like that cover image is going to be a different size, right? And notice how the profile picture is still a circle, but it's right smack in the center, names in the center, little mini bios in the center, uh, tabs are all over here and a big giant blue button, add to story, <laughs> right? Uh, and then most everything looks like it's somewhat in the same place. So that's a kind of a bit of a new design on the, on the profile as well, possibly a new dimensions on the cover image it looks like to me, which could affect pages as well. Watch has its own whole section. It seems to be in dark mode. Now, another pause, let me, let me pause this. Uh, let me jump to it again because it went away. Let me pause it. This I'm also really excited about because this is a new desktop notifications section, which you get to by clicking on the bell. And how awesome is this? It reminds me actually of the inbox, the Facebook business inbox, where you can manage, uh, you know, your comments, your notifications, as well as your private messages. And so this one, I was like, oh my gosh, finally, a somewhat much better utilization of notifications. So someone's commented, uh, mentioned you in a comment, as you're clicking on the notification, it just sits over here. So you can just go through your notifications and interact and acknowledge and like and whatever you need to do over here, which I think is great. I really like that. So uh, carry on playing this. And then goes back to home and I think that's it. Yeah. But even up in the top left here, excuse me, top right is the uh, suggested groups. So I kind of like it looking forward to it. I think it's going to be great. Um, so the new, uh, then the mobile and desktop, this is what Facebook's saying. We're rolling out FB five, a fresh new design for Facebook. It's simpler, faster, more immersive. I always think it's interesting when they use that word more immersive and puts your communities at the center. Changes are already rolling out on mobile. And, uh, I should have made my slide so that my camera all sits in the same place, but not to worry. New desktop site is coming in the next few months. All righty. I'm pretty excited by that. Yeah, I know. Right. Exactly. Exactly. I agree. I agree. So FB five, I'm saying exactly to, um, Ed, he says, I hope notifications are as easy and clean as that. It looks like they will be. It looks like they will be. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. Hey, Mary, she's saying the new design looks great. Love the simple, clean lines. I know I like the simple. Exactly. Right, buddy. Clean and clear. Ah, oh, yeah. So I really hope that they've, uh, I hope that they've done a great job of this and it really does look, look exactly like it, like it's going to look. Um, let me see if I can get an article. Um, hmm. Uh, hmm. I think I can, I want to pull up on the screen. I, I was reading from it this morning during my, oh good. Perfect. I found it. I want to share this with you because I think this is really, this is really timely and, uh, relevant. So, uh, an article by our friends here at, um, uh, TechCrunch, Facebook pivots to what it wishes it was. And I wish, I wish I didn't have to see ads on TechCrunch. Love you guys, but <laughs> how do you get rid of the ad? You can't click on that. But anyway, Facebook pivots to what it wishes it was. I'm going to hit refresh. I don't have to look at that ad. <laughs> Facebook pivots to what it wishes it was. Zuckerberg gets aspirational. Now watch this. In Facebook's dreams, it's a clean and private place. People spend their time having thoughtful discussions in meaningful groups, planning offline meetups with events or laughing together in a Facebook watch party. In reality, Facebook's a cluttered mass of features that seems to constantly leak user data. People waste their time viewing a name newsfeed post from friends they never talked to, and basically stalking through photos of peers or chowing on clickbait articles and viral videos in isolation. Facebook will never shake this reputation if it just keeps polishing its old features. I'm bringing this up in the context of us just looking at that new desktop and mobile redesign because it feels like they've really, uh, it's not just like a, you know, a fresh coat of paint on an old thing. It's really, um, uh, it's, it's giving people um, a different relationship to Facebook, putting communications front and center, communities front and center. 
They're calling it an aspirational redesign. Yeah, see? Rather than polishing what Facebook was, it's trying to spotlight what it wants to be. It's the biggest change we've made to the Facebook app site, app site in five years. Alrighty? So that's exciting to me. I think that's really um, good news. Yeah. <laughs> Clutter is the word I know. Hi guys, that's funny. All right, back to my slides. Let's just uh, carry on with some, some more updates, some, uh, some more information I got here for you. So uh, putting the groups first, as we mentioned, we saw that personalized feed across all your groups, the new discovery tool, search by topics and improved recommendations specifically for groups. All righty. And, and then this is the mobile and I just showed you my own phone a little bit ago, but this is uh, Facebook screenshots where they're showing where you can actually put in your interests. I'm interested in restaurants, cooking and recipes, desserts, drinks, and then it goes, Hey, what about new to French cuisine group? Okay. So this is just, uh, Facebook's suggestions and it's very much connected to not just groups, but this is how you're going to be able to connect with friends uh, find new friends. And then it also has a relationship to the dating app. I'm positive. I'm sure there's a connection to, to the dating app, even though you actually have a separate profile for dating. We'll get to that in a moment. I have it in, I have it in my notes. <laughs> All right. Group post and newsfeed friend. OMG. There was a news. I don't even know what you want to call it. A, a, a meme going around saying that you should unlink your group from your business page. If you had them linked that you should unlink it because group posts were getting less feed in the less visibility in the newsfeed. <laughs> my brain is having a hard time today. Oh my gosh. This is the first time I've been back at my desk in like 10 days. I've been on the road just traveling and speaking and doing all kinds of other things. So my, my brain's like going, wow, ah, what? I'm trying to get through a lot. I spent hours and hours just, you know, compiling all of this and assimilating it and pulling out the best nuggets for you. Um, but anyway, that's just rubbish. It's nonsense. Do not believe that. Do not unlink your group from your page. Um, and if anything, the exciting thing is that we're actually going to see more group posts in the newsfeed more. In fact, Facebook actually said it. You may see more content from your groups in newsfeed there. Boom. Thank you. Thank you. Facebook. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> to make my camera tiny. So I think this is awesome. This is great news for all of us. Oh, also look at this, eh? Th they said that we're making it easier to get relevant group recommendations elsewhere. So you're, if you manage and run one or more groups, uh, ideally by your page, it doesn't have to be by your page, but maybe you have one from your profile, one from your page or more, but, uh, you're going to get relevant group recommendations from marketplace today in that's their local news section, the gaming tab and Facebook watch. So your, your groups are going to get more visibility, which means more members. Alrighty. And, and you're also, people are going to be able to share to multiple groups. So this is just an example here on the left of somebody sharing to multiple groups. And then Ed was saying earlier, he's seen the ability to share, did you say you've seen it to share to multiple stories? I think that's what you said, Ed, if you're still here, but this is kind of cool. So you can just like, you know, tap a whole bunch of groups. I think they already have this. I thought I saw that recently. If you do a status update on your page or your profile, your page, I think it is, you can actually tap a bunch of groups and uh, go ahead and, and share it to multiple groups. Now then buy and sell groups. This is pretty exciting for a lot of folks out there that do this kind of, uh, this kind of marketing. Uh, there's certain organizations that do, um, the buy and sells. And so this one really excited me as well. Facebook says, we know that, uh, people use Facebook live. Hello, Facebook live. Are you listening closely marketers to sell things in buy and sell groups? Uh, adjusting my camera. Uh, we're exploring ways to let buyers easily ask questions and place orders without leaving the live broadcast. Now then friends, I first saw Facebook doing a major beta test of that feature. I'm not kidding. Two years ago, I actually included screenshots in my presentation at social media marketing world, 2017 of the ability to buy products 
while watching a Facebook Live and check out and pay and choose your size and your color and your item numbers, your shipping, the whole shebang, and all the while you're still watching the live on mobile, on mobile. So I've got that uh, screenshot coming up for you uh, in a second here. Actually, I think it's coming up in the, in the next sec section. This is just an example of Facebook showing you the buy and sell group. So then you can go, what are you selling? Uh, here it is, Facebook meets QVC. This slide right here verbatim, this slide is from my Social Media Marketing World 2017 presentation. That's how long ago Facebook was testing this real-time shopping with live. It was an, a page that, that's a beta page they'd set up called Found. This is wine o'clock. They were doing a Facebook live broadcast and they're showing off wine. You can see here, there's like 68,000 views. I got a little arrow there showing you there's products listed underneath the live. Um, there was another one over here on the left where it's, you were able to purchase um, mid-rise, whatever, micro flare stain, stain resistant jeans. And you can see where my cursor is on the left below like you've got your comments and then at the bottom you've got what you can swipe left and right to check out um, the products for sale and then because you know how you've got the picture in picture floating player that's how they'll be able to do this real-time shopping where you're actually checking out and the live is playing all the while it's playing see that where my cursor is moving down here uh, that's, you know, if I back up here, that's, that's just what they said. And this, this, this here, they said that you'll be able to ask questions, but place orders without leaving the live. Yay! Isn't that exciting? I love that. I think that's really exciting. And, and, and here's the thing that those of us like myself, who you don't necessarily have products, retail products, but you have services, you have courses, you have memberships, you have, um, you know, whatever it might be, speaking, consulting, that if Facebook makes that available to us as well and being able to actually do back in the day how we would do webinars and we would do launches and you'd be able to say, you know, click on the button below and buy now. And so being, being able to do that on a Facebook Live is pretty exciting. Yeah, exactly. Boom, says Brad. <laughs> exactly. That's exciting, isn't it? Yeah. All right, then a couple of other things they have with groups is what they call job groups. And it's gonna have a new template for employers to post openings in an easier way for job seekers to message the employer and actually apply. This is a screenshot of it right here. So it's just an example of the Wichita job board with 12,000 members. And if you're gonna post a job, it's really easy. You just fill in the information there. And uh, I think that's great. I, I, I'd like to, to, to see more of that, it's wonderful. This one, oh my gosh, health support group. So for the longest time, certain um, professionals in the health care industry or anybody who's, you know, in some way connected to health and wellness, you might have wanted to have an ability to interact in a group, but not have your identity shown to actually be able to anonymously be in a health support group and get support, get questions, ask questions, and, but not want everybody in the world to be able to see, you know, that you're in there asking about something very sensitive. So Facebook's finally listened to the request around this. And um, they actually said, you know, different communities have different needs. So we're introducing new features for different types of groups. And they're calling them health support groups. Members can post questions and share information without their name appearing on a post. This is really exciting. This is very, very good news for anybody who's in this um, a health support group or you run one um, and shout out to, I learned this, that uh, Ashley Green, Greener, uh, or Greener is an attorney who suffers from congestive heart failure and she's been working directly with Facebook to um, get them to add this new feature. So kudos Ashley. This is really, really um, much needed, right? Much needed for, for uh, that, this kind of group. See my little camera there, I'll make myself tiny. <laughs> So yeah, again, depending, depending on what kind of uh, circles that you move in, you know, this will be really, really added benefit um, to, to many folks. I think that's great. This is the first time Facebook's ever, ever done this. 
ever. Well, yeah, I know Warren's got an interesting point here. He says it's going to be a troll magnet. No identity is crazy. But see, Facebook, that's why like they're work, working directly with this attorney lady. That, and they're making it has to specifically be a health support group. It's not like they're just going to go carte blanche. Okay, everybody, just go ahead and choose whether you want to act with uh, with your identity or without. They spoke about it a long time ago, uh, Facebook did. Um, they were going to give kind of anonymous interaction ability to like journalists so that journalists could go into groups and dialogue with regular everyday people and get information but without their identity. That never came to anything. But uh, frankly, I think it's really a good thing to be able to have this very sensitive and private um, topic or with health support to not have to reveal your identity. But I, I'm sure Warren and everybody else that Facebook's already anticipating some some craziness, right? And so they'll they'll they're going to put some some uh, stop stop gaps and some measures in place. Hi Nancy, exactly. They can be balanced out by the admins. They might even have it where it's approval, right? For the admin, you could do that. I don't know if you'd have to always set it up that way, but maybe there's even a little like switch where you can say anybody who posts something uh, without revealing their identity that the admin can pre pre approve that, right? They'll see it first. So. Uh, or is Buddy saying it might have to be a verified group? Exactly. It would have like a verified health support group. Like uh, this this um, lady Ashley here, she's clearly working with Facebook, as it says, because uh, uh, she actually has a group that she runs, which is um, uh, membership only, right? You have to you know apply to get in, that kind of thing. So uh, anyway, so that's all really good. There's great gaming groups. Some of you, this might affect you. Gaming groups are going to get a whole new feature that... Uh, Members can create threads for different topics within the group. Uh, quick screenshot from Facebook here. This is not my world at all. Um, not really a gamer. I guess I kind of was when I was about 12. <laughs> that was a few years ago now, but uh, I don't have time to game. And I know, I know there's some wonderful gamers out there. Many of my friends are gamers. And so this is kind of fun. Hiya, Susie. Hey, good to see you here. Awesome, possum. Um... Ronnie's bringing up an interesting question and uh, it's funny you should say that because we have Susie here and Susie Nelson actually works in the groups arena. She is an absolute expert with Facebook groups and uh, the question that Ronnie is asking is the group subscription feature. Um, now Ronnie are you talking about are you talking about the uh, fan subscription on pages uh, because I do, I think that, I think maybe you are, because I do have that feature on my page and I, and it's been there for just a couple of weeks and I really need to get in and start using it. But, um, that's this one here where it says, let fans fund your creative work and they can go ahead and have monthly fan subscriptions and you can set your amount. You can set your amount. So yeah, so that's definitely coming. I, I, I think this is really exciting and I'm definitely going to be utilizing this one. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, but at the moment, I mean, you can definitely have a group where you only let paid members in, right? They're paying you monthly through PayPal, or if you have a, you have your own, you know, merchant system, then you can make sure that only people who are, are paying you their, your monthly fee get into the group, right? So that's one way. Uh, but I will be, stay tuned, because I'm definitely going to use that fan subscription level. It is exactly like Patreon. I just saw a Frantonia. What a fun name. Frantonia is just similar to Patreon. It is indeed. All right. A couple of new features. Meet new friends. It's going to help you uh, start friendships with uh, new new uh, people shared from your, from your shared communities like a school, workplace, or city. The good news is it's opt-in, okay? Because at first I thought, oh my God, the example they showed was like this girl going, um, uh, oh, hey, you're into fitness and you're a new mom. Want to meet for coffee? And it's like, ah, you know, could you imagine just all these people just randomly saying, hey, we have two things in common. You want to meet up? <laughs> and this is just friends. This is not the dating app. It's a whole other topic we'll get to in a moment. But um, this, fortunately, is opt-in. So you get to say, I would like to be in the meet new friends, you know, uh, feature. Like sign me up for the meet new friends thing. And you put all your criteria in there, things you're interested in. But the cool thing is that this is Facebook's attempt to really like broaden communities online and offline. I think it's really good. It's a, it's a good thing. Groups are uh, very integrated. Oh, integrated with the meet new friends. So you can meet new friends from your most meaningful communities, says Facebook. So love that. 
It's being started. They've started already tested in a few places. It's going to roll out wider soon. So this is pretty cool. New events tab coming. So you get to see what's happening around you, get recommendations, discover local businesses, coordinate with friends to make plans to get together. And you can actually, now I put this little, this is not part of what Facebook announced, but there's a new events tab that's just inside of the main app. But there is an app called Local, Facebook Local. And it's on um, both iOS and Android, PC and Mac. And if you just go, in fact, click on that, facebook.com slash local. I think this is one of the Facebook's best kept secrets. I am not kidding you. I think the Facebook local is an amazing app and you can search everything under the sun to do in your local city. Or let's say that you're going to be traveling, you're going to somewhere else in another part of the country or the world and you want to check some things out. What are the best restaurants, cafes? What's some of the things to do? What, what's an event that's on that you might like to go to? Let's say that you, that you okay, um, sir, I see your question. You don't need to ask it a million times. What's the percent of reach in groups? <laughs> uh, don't know, don't know the exact percent. Um, so anyway, but this, this is a really great, great app. And, and, and but, but what Facebook's doing is that they're bringing the events tab, ah, uh, I gotta, I got to take care of this person who keeps asking. Stop asking the same question multiple times. <laughs> That's just annoying when people do that. Dude, I'm going to have to boot you out. You can't keep asking me that question. Stop it. Uh, hang on. Where's my cursor? Am I seeing things or does that question keep coming up a million times? Where is it? comments. Oh, it always looks totally, totally different. Now I'm seeing it totally different on desktop. Totally different. Oh, there it is. I see him now. Okay, dude, I see your question and I don't know the answer. Maybe it's a bug. Is it a bug? No, he really is asking it 400 times. Okay. I have to do this because this is annoying. Oh, maybe somebody's already done it for me. It just makes the experience frustrating for others. Yeah, I know what you mean. Sometimes there's a glitch, but I, I don't think so. I think it just keeps getting, uh, yeah. <laughs> All right, take care of that. Sorry about that, friends. Thanks for understanding. Uh, so yeah, the local, so there's going to get a new tab, but right now you don't have to wait for the new tab because there already is a standalone app, which is amazing. Events tab. There you go. Coming this summer. Uh, there's my screenshot. I just showed you that. Now then, let's shift gears to talk about Marketplace. Shipping. You might have seen this if you ever used um, Marketplace. People's gonna be, people are going to be able to ship Marketplace items anywhere in the continental U.S. and pay for their purchases directly on Facebook. So for sellers, this means reaching more buyers and getting paid securely. Now then, security... And Facebook, do they go hand in hand? <laughs> she says, tongue in cheek. Well, Facebook is really going to be wanting to, you know, assure users and businesses and advertisers that they really are serious about protecting our security and our privacy and our data. And they're getting better and they're really making this everything at F8 it was all geared towards this. For buyers, it means shopping more items near or far. So these are a few different screenshots and actually videos. So this is um, a little video of Facebook showing you a buy sell group, a buy sell group. And this is Facebook's little video and they're saying, oh my gosh, and you got that little messenger button right there in the buy sell group and you're messaging on a live. Okay, it's a little bit different to what I showed you earlier that they were beta testing where you can actually purchase on a live while the live is playing. But this is an ability to actually message the person that you see that little messenger button right there and you're messaging the person if you're interested in buying then you've got uh this is a group that if you're wanting to buy you're checking out off you go you've put it all in literally like in three clicks flat right because you've already got your credit card in there and um it tells you is right here by the way the seller gives uh, give, the seller has 24 hours and um, only gets your delivery information after they've accepted your order. So that's what it looks like for buying. And then for selling, this is what it looks for. 
Uh, this is what it looks like. So you hit sell, you hit items, you fill it all in, put it in category, your description, hit next. Sh shipping methods, FedEx, shipping rate, whatever you want to charge, hit next. So like, it's like, you know, half a dozen taps and boom, you're all set up and good to go. So another area where Facebook's really wanting to push, right, is just the ability to do buying and selling. Okay, next up, we're going to talk about Instagram. Instagram, love Instagram. I've been saying this, I'm not kidding, for two years now, Instagram is Facebook's next Facebook. You know what, friends, I got to tell you, they, I don't know who they is. I think they, in this case, is actually, it could be an independent. It might have been an independent study or it could have been Facebook. I forget my source. But Facebook... Uh, so, so they did a survey in the United States and 50% of the people they surveyed do not know or did not know that Facebook owns Instagram. 50%. And so what's really interesting is Facebook's been in the news for like two years solid with all these scandals and challenges and issues they've had to deal with. And now, a, you know, a $3 billion or up to $5 billion fine from the FTC. And so, you know, Facebook's reputation is somewhat tarnished. They're really working on getting it back up to par. Meanwhile, people are like, oh my God, Facebook's for old people. Uh, Instagram, I'm going to go to Instagram, right? They're all like, I'm going to Instagram. You know, that Instagram is like the darling of social media. I'm not kidding, right? It's like the darling of social media because people are like blissfully unaware that Facebook owns them. So... This is Adam Masseri, former head of Newsfeed and now head of Instagram, right? He took over when um, the founders left. Um, and this is just him on screen taking a little picture. So he's announcing the donation sticker. Um, so a few updates. There's 130 million accounts on Instagram that tap on a shopping post to learn more about products every month. That's pretty exciting. So big time shopping, commerce, right? It's called mobile commerce or social commerce. And I'll talk in a moment about private commerce. So you can shop from creators. This is new. Anyone in the global Instagram community can shop from creators. Now they've apps, they've already pre-selected about 50 creators and the creators are handpicked for the moment. So you can't just go and decide that you want to be a creator. Um, I keep sliding up my camera and then I have more font on the next slide. <laughs> no worries. Creators tag products in their posts, just like the shoppable, you know, you have shoppable tags and you have to connect it to your Facebook shop. And then the users buy without leaving Instagram. This is the big key point right here, friends. They buy without leaving Instagram. Um, at the moment, as I say, they're testing around 50 creators starting next week with plans to expand access over time. And then there's also, it's checkout on Instagram. It's, and there's about 20 some brands that have the checkout on Instagram. Those are the products that the creators will be able to tag. If you don't yet have checkout on Instagram and you would like to, just go to bit.ly slash checkout underscore IG. I made that for you. So let me just put that over into your comments right here, just in case anybody's interested to apply. I'm going to go like this, apply for checkout on Instagram. It's currently in closed beta. And I just made a bit.ly for you. There you go, friends. And that goes to, uh, I'll show you where it goes. That goes to the application form. So if, you're, if it's applica applicable for you or for one of your clients, you can let Instagram know if you're interested in check out on Instagram. It's currently closed beta, but you can still help us get it ready for a wider release. And uh, you just fill in the details of your business. How's your you know, product catalog? It's really for uh, retail. This is really exciting. Also, what's going to be coming is um, e-commerce platforms. They're actually asking you right here, which e-commerce platform do you use? It was like Big Commerce, IBM, Magento, Open Cart, Shopify, of course, is a big one, right? There's WooCommerce, uh, maybe it's other, maybe it's a proprietary one. So it's pretty exciting. Very, very simple form if you're interested in uh, having that feature on Instagram. Check out on Instagram, it's called. So uh, this is just a, a showing off like with a creator, uh, say the lease. She has, um, you know, tagging this product and uh, from NARS Cosmetics. 
creators in the shop, uh, excuse me, shop the looks. It's called shop looks, shop looks beta. So these are the 50 creators that have already gotten access to this shop look starting next week. And then the checkout, uh, this is, a, just put in a screenshot here of um, Instagram shopping checkout. Got that covered up a bit, I didn't mean to. So, and there I put the link in for you. All right, and as I say, I'll, I'm gonna load these slides up so you'll have them as well. This is just emphasizing what I'm talking about here with um, <laughs> social commerce slash private commerce. Now, shout out to Grace Duffy from the Social Media Examiner, Social Media Marketing Talk Show this morning. She was telling me about this. This is a fairly new term called private commerce. The goal of what Facebook wants to do is to monetize. And the goal here is to purchase without leaving the app. So they're really focused on Instagram first, as you can tell. Then you can guarantee that commerce, social shopping, private shopping is coming to Messenger and WhatsApp. Eventually it'll come to Portal, right? Those of you that have the in-home video chat device, if you don't, you might want to check it out. I don't know. I'm not getting one. <laughs> Maybe, and then of course the Oculus, right? You'll be able to make purchases and shop right inside of the um, VR. Payments as well, it's a huge area. Cryptocurrency, the Facebook coin. The Facebook coin, the cryptocurrency, Barclays predicts is about $19 billion of revenue will be added to Facebook's revenue when they have cryptocurrency, uh, the payments, uh, or excuse me, the, the, the crypto coin. Uh, but payments actually is already available in WhatsApp. They rolled out payments on WhatsApp in India. A few more Instagram updates. You've got the donation sticker. 100% of the money raised goes to the nonprofit you support, which is wonderful. We love that. Oopsie daisies. Go back to my camera. <laughs> I love Ecamm and it's like, I love the ability to be able to move my camera around like that. But uh, I just needed to design my slides a little differently so that I didn't have to keep moving my camera, but not to worry. Available in the US now, Instagram's working to bring it to more countries. And I saw the moment that it came out, a shout out to Brene Brown. I love what she did. Uh, Brene Brown, she's got her give now as a highlight. And I thought I just really liked, I really liked how she'd done that. Um, let me go like this and, and bring up my, there we go. Perfect. Um, I'm going to bring up uh, my Instagram and show uh, what I was looking at with uh, Brene's profile. I could show you on desktop, but it's more fun, isn't it? It's more fun to look on mobile. And so uh, I saw this in Brene's stories because I follow her on her stories mostly. And she was directing people to go and look at her highlights. And you see how she's got this give now highlight. So I'm going to tap into there. And uh, she's highlighting uh, numerous uh, charities that she just supports. There's Charity Water in one story, right? And you can just tap it. You just tap to hit donate. There's another one, Together Rising. And then another one, Malala Fund. And then another one, Every Town. So really smart. I thought it was super smart what Brene did. She has her little Give Now highlight. Isn't that clever? So you can actually show your support for for um, the, the charities, the nonprofits that you support, and a hundred percent of the donations go to that charity. And I saw that this was in my feed, and a beautiful quote by Dr. Maya Angelou that Brene Brown shared. Uh, I have found that among its other benefits, giving liberates the soul of the giver. And I saw this where she had posted it and then put it in her story, and she's saying, "Check out my stories for a few of my favorite nonprofits, and then our Give Now highlight circle." more to come. So that was just a few days ago, right when it was announced. Kudos, Brene, love ya. Such a neat lady. Great, great, great work she does. All right, so let me minimize that. Yeah, isn't that nice? We can have these charities to support. All right, I think we're almost through my slides. Um, so that's just some screenshots indeed of the, we just saw Brene Brown at real live. And then guess what? I love it when we can announce something brand new that is not part of Facebook's official announcements. This is just discovered by at Wong M. Jane. That's her Twitter ID. I don't know, she might be on Instagram too, but she, she does a lot on Twitter. She's a reverse engineering specialist. Uh, she always discovers things long before anybody else, but she found a private group discussion chat sticker that's coming to Instagram. And you can see just on the right here that uh, basically on the story where it says, um, it's just her story, it says, what's this chat about? 
and you see what the chat's about right right there above her the sticker the sticker says join chat and then right there it says people who view your story can request to join this group chat so that's going to open up probably a private dm chat on instagram direct i think this is a real game changer for businesses too for marketers and businesses right uh, because there's just a lot of things we can do with that indeed i know buddy you are right you are right my friend he says facebook and instagram are truly connecting the world they sure as heck are. Um, hey guys, I'll, I'll ask you, I'll see your questions in a moment. You're wondering about uh, private groups. Yeah, and Facebook Live's coming to Portal. I have a little section coming up on uh, Portal. And <laughs> Warren, you're absolutely right. It's hard not to love Brene. So cool that she has her new show on Netflix. Oh, it's super awesome. <laughs> um, okay, finish up here, Mari. I'm almost through. Uh, what else I got for you? Uh, okay, this is also not part of like like um, announcements per se, but you might have seen that Facebook's testing hiding like counts. And at first I was like, what? That doesn't make sense. Why would they do that? But guess what? We can't see like counts in um, stories. They're not public facing, right? Only you can. You can see your likes, but it's not public facing. And so a big part of it, I think, is just to help people to better navigate and um, not feel so like um, comparing themselves and have a, you know, it contributes to well-being is, is what they're calling digital well-being. I love that. Promoting digital well-being. So Adam Masseri was really kind of, um, you know, pick things up and, and running with them with this whole concept of being able to prevent bullying and, and, and people acting in bad ways, misbehaving. Kevin Systrom, see, my, as I told my, my brain was a bit fuzzy today, but I love Kevin. Kevin, we miss Kevin, but I think Adam's doing a pretty good job um, taking over for him. So you're going to have a nudge feature, warning users if they're about to comment something hurtful. This is on Instagram. And then you have an away mode, they said, for let's say you're taking a summer off or a school break or something, they said, and you don't want to have to be bombarded with notifications. You just put your, your Instagram profile in away mode. And then you can also do what's called manage interactions. So you can set limits on how certain people can interact with you. Maybe you want someone to be able to see your content, but not direct message you, uh, you know, or see your content, but not like it, stuff like that. So some good, different use cases. And that's uh, Adam Masseri talking about combating bullying on Instagram. A couple more things. Uh, you've got the new camera. Um, I don't know. We'll see. It's like it, the cool thing. I think a lot of people are excited that you can just slide it over to create and you don't have to start with a video or a photo. You can just go right into to creating and, and you use one of their stickers. Like that's the question sticker. I think that's the countdown timer sticker. That to me even look as up where my cursor is the very, very, very bottom right. Uh, looks like the archive, right? So you maybe can pull something from your archives, which would be awesome. That's a great way to repurpose stories. Let's talk about WhatsApp. WhatsApp is getting a business catalog. You can see a business catalog within WhatsApp while chatting with a business. This is really good news for uh, any international businesses or certainly businesses outside the US or businesses in the US that have customers outside the US. You can showcase your goods so people can easily discover them in WhatsApp. Now then, if you don't yet have the WhatsApp for Business app, I highly recommend that you go and you get that. If it's applicable to you, you can have it on Android and uh, it's also available in uh, beta in uh, for iOS. I have the iOS uh, business, WhatsApp business app. Now we're gonna talk quickly about Portal. Portal is an in-home video chat device. Hands up who has one. I'm super curious who here has a, a Portal. This is John McCarthy. He's head of product management at Portal. And Portal is very similar to, um, if anybody here has an, uh, you might have an, uh, what the heck are they even called? An Amazon Echo, and then they've got an Amazon Echo Show. It's the one with the actual screen, and you can do video. Can you do video chats with the Amazon Echo Show, or is the show part just to be able to see videos? I don't know. I don't I don't use it. I've got like three Amazon Echoes that I've gotten for gifts over the years, and I'm just afraid to open the boxes. <laughs> I don't want to get a... I don't want to get one. Yeah, Alexa, Alexa is the operating system, exactly, because you can wake her up and go, Hey, Alexa. Uh, so what's coming though is that WhatsApp video chat and messenger video chat inside of Portal fully end-to-end -end encrypted. I think this is going to really sell the portals. I think this is really clever of Facebook. It's a great way to go. 
super smart. So I think this is really going to sell portals. I really do. A couple other things are expanding from the US to Canada and then into Europe this fall. So even if you were kind of on the fence and thinking, oh my God, who's going to buy a portal? The, they're obviously going well enough that they're expanding. WhatsApp's coming, as I mentioned. Call friends who use WhatsApp or Messenger. Now then, they're actually really in good relationship with Amazon. Alexa is actually, I don't know if it's fully baked into, but it's Alexa's part of Portal. And, you, and what's coming is the ability to get your flash briefings, smart home control, and this part blew me away. Amazon Prime Video inside a Facebook portal. What? Isn't that going to compete with Facebook Watch? And like Red Table Talk and Ball in the Family and all of those things that they have. Sorry for your loss, all those shows. Maybe, but maybe this is a really good partnership. You know, Zuckerberg and Bezos, <laughs> match made in heaven. <laughs> Who knows? Maybe they're going to be sharing data with each other. But how is that? I think that might sell more portals too. If you can get your Amazon Prime videos playing on your portals coming later this year. And then also Facebook Live. Nancy, you mentioned that earlier. So indeed, Facebook Live is coming to Portal. That's going to help sell more portals, un unquestionably, right? You just press a button and you're live on this nice little portable device. Pretty cool. Okay, I'm going to talk about dating. This may or may not apply to you. If you're happily married or in a relationship, you can tune out now. <laughs> But I'm, I wanted to predominantly give you business updates, but I thought I would go ahead and give you an update on the dating as well, because it may it may be applicable. I'm, I'm just curious. I'm like curious about what they're doing and how they're monetizing it. Um, so it's so like, welcome to Facebook dating. It's all, you know, you, you have a private separate profile. They say that we don't show your dating profile. Uh, they suggest matches based on the things that you share in common. You're only matched with a Facebook friend if you both want it to happen. So it's safe, it's respectful, uh, designed it with your privacy in mind. And so the dating app was actually announced over a year ago. That was the big news, right? That F8 2018, Facebook dating. It's really, I don't know what's taken them so long to, to, to roll it out more. Uh, but it's a separate profile. It's totally opt-in. There's apparently 200 million users on Facebook listed as single. It's available in Colombia, Thailand, Canada, Argentina, and Mexico. Now then, do we have any Canadians in the house? If you're in Canada, I'd be very curious to know if you have the dating app or you already had it or has it just become available? I wasn't clear on that. If it's already been out in Canada or it only just launched. Then it's coming to the U.S., end of year those of you there in the us and they're really looking forward to using the dating app end of year i have a lot of friends asking me about that i have some people who work in the dating industry actually relationship experts my when's dating coming to, to to the us uh but what they did announce on tuesday uh is that they've expanded to 14 new countries so if you're in any of these countries here listed on the screen then you might want to check out the facebook dating app so far, no ads or no paid features, but analysts predict that the online dating industry could be worth $12 billion a year by 2020. Isn't that extraordinary? Thanks, Jason. Good to have you here. Pricey. Hi, Pricey. You have it now in the Philippines. Yay. So I just thought this was interesting. These are three screenshots. So you can actually say, I am a woman or a man or you can ask for more options. Now, as many of you know here, it takes all kinds. It takes all kinds. You might think there's only two genders, but there's a variety of ways that people identify. And uh, right here, you can decide you're, you're whatever, you're a non-binary person and that you are this kind of person and you want to meet that kind of person. It's really interesting. Really, I just, I just saw these screenshots and I was like, oh my gosh, wow, okay. It's pretty progressive. This information will help us suggest matches. It's really amazing. Anyway, now then, and one more feature under the dating is I think a lot of people might have been excited about this. I don't know, but it's called Secret Crush. And you can, if you have the dating app, you can select up to nine of your Facebook friends to let them know you have a secret crush on them. But they do not know that. They'll, all they'll get is a little notification saying, hey, one of your friends has a secret crush on you. 
and until they get the dating app, and if they add you as well as a secret crush, then the two of you will know. We'll see. <laughs> we'll see. I don't know. I'm curious to see how all that works. Anyway, Zuckerberg saying he believes the future of communication will increasingly shift to private encrypted services. People can be confident what they say to each other stays secure and their messages and content won't stick around forever, meaning ephemeral, meaning stories, meaning it disappears. This was back on March 6th. That's part of Zuckerberg's 3200 word privacy manifesto. And that uh, he did mention that the stories um, concept, the, the idea of disappearing content would actually be coming out to other aspects of Facebook. So we might have things like, I don't know, disappearing private messages, disappearing wall posts. Um, at the moment on Facebook pages, you can actually put an expiration date. Oh my God. It was um, sunny when I started this broadcast and now, now it's dark. <laughs> oh well. The interoperability, this part here, did he talk about it here? No, no, he doesn't mention it. But the interoperability is where they're going to have, there's three, the WhatsApp Messenger and Instagram Direct are going to be able to be fully interoperable, meaning that if I message you from Messenger, which is my preferred messaging app, and you prefer to use WhatsApp, I just hit that button and it goes right to you in your preferred messaging app. So it's pretty cool. <laughs> Nancy, you're funny. <laughs> She's exactly... <laughs> oh God, I got a sore jaw. Um, it disappears so Congress can never use it. I know, I know, right? Read between the lines here. Aye, aye, aye. Uh, and I thought this is a great article. I'll get you the link to this. Facebook's plan to fuse its messaging apps. It's not about your privacy. Shout out to Owen Williams for writing this really, really interesting article. He says, just follow the money. And this is his diagram in that article. He says, here's Facebook today. It's very siloed. There's three silos. You got Facebook and Messenger. Um, different databases, different, your identities over there. Then you've got a separate database with WhatsApp and a separate database with Instagram. This is what Facebook looks like today. When they bring out the interoperable between all three messaging apps, then you've got one identity into these different databases and connected into ad profiles, right? So I thought that was really interesting. One final segment I'm going to mention stories. Zuckerberg said, uh, why didn't he say this like last fall, last fall, that stories are the future and stories are growing 15 times faster than feed content. So if you're not yet doing stories, you've got to get on it and do stories. The good news is that you can easily repurpose content. You can have that little button check to just automatically post to stories at the same time as you're doing your wall content. You can definitely have your Instagram profile cross posting over to your Facebook stories. And as I mentioned, this broadcast is brought to you by my good friends at wave.video and wave makes it so, so easy to create story videos. You can do 15 seconds, nine by 16. And let's say you've made a horizontal video and it's doing really well. You can just chop it up into 15 second clips and post it out as a story. Uh, you might do square videos for Facebook and Instagram and then make story versions, make, you know, four little 15 second videos. Uh, in the vertical format and you can add this is just a screenshot we're looking at right here but definitely check it out go to wave.video and it's totally free they have a free forever plan uh, which is awesome love them I've been using them for two and a half years and they're really truly my favorite video app and I am delighted to be a brand ambassador for them so let's see if I've got time for just a couple of questions and it's probably well past my dinner time <laughs> thanks for hanging out friends it's great to see you here uh, let's see, John Williams. Let's see if I can put this up on the screen, John. Thank you, Nancy. You're the best. John is asking, will, will there ever be cross live video from Facebook to Instagram or will that not happen because of screen orientation and portrait versus landscape? We have more followers on Instagram than we do on Facebook. We want to bring those Instagram followers to our Facebook live. Wow. It's a really good point, John. Yeah. I know what you mean. I don't know if there'll ever be like cross live video, but it's not a bad idea. Mm, and I think there are some apps that do that for you. Um, but otherwise, I might suggest using stories and your posts and a short Instagram live 
to drive people back over to, to your Facebook Live. So you see your more followers on Instagram. We kind of sometimes we just have to meet people where they're at, right? But at the same time, you can utilize your platforms that have more followers to drive people back to, to the other ones. Yeah, you're welcome, Lisa. Oh, sure thing. Uh, hi, Mohammed. Yes, I actually have um, find out all Mari's video gear and more at uh, if you go to marismith.com slash video kit. And I've got everything over there that I use with the DSLR camera and the software. I even have a great download that helps you to get um, it's full of tips on how to get more reach and engagement on your videos. Yeah, Warren's saying meet people where they're at. Virginia saying it'd be great to cross post. Hiya, Ed, you're still here. You're a trooper. Eventually, because Facebook's really connecting Instagram. I know, I agree. Thank you, Adam. I appreciate you being here. And buddy, I saw a nice comment from you. Thank you, buddy. He says, Mari Smith, you truly are the best instructor, teacher, just great leader. <laughs> I appreciate that. <laughs> thank you, buddy. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> oh, Kelly, it's much better than watching a live car chase. <laughs> On a Friday night, you guys are funny. Um, okay, Frantonia. Hi, I just love your name. How will these privacy changes affect Facebook ads and retargeting? So Facebook ads... The only thing that was really going to be affected is newsfeed ads, but that's already been kind of like in the works for about two years now because Facebook has said, you no, know, they're running out of ad inventory. So they've literally had to create other places for users to spend their time and place their attention and put their eyeballs in order for them to be able to, for Facebook to be able to offer advertising in those two main areas. One is video and the other is stories. So that's why, you know, you've got 1.5 billion, although there's going to be a lot of overlap. So 500 million daily active users on Instagram stories and the same on Facebook stories now as of last week, including messenger stories and WhatsApp status, half a billion daily active, not monthly, but daily active. So that's really where it's at with ads. And right now with ads manager, if you just leave the automatic placements button selected, then you're already advertising on stories. But you might want to go ahead and, and create stories specifically um, in that immersive 9 by 16 format with images and videos and text overlay and stickers and polls and voting and good cool things like that. As far as retargeting, um, I think if anything, we're going to get even more cool retargeting things like I showed a screenshot much earlier about uh, custom audiences coming to groups. So we'll be able to make custom audiences from uh, the members of our groups. And then I would also like to see the ability to do lookalikes based on that, which I'm sure we'll be able to. Well, that's pretty exciting. All right, I think I'll do one more question and then I gotta go. Uh, <laughs> you're welcome, Warren. <laughs> Nancy, you just cracked me up on that point. Uh, yeah. <laughs> oh my god i know <laughs> i have to be on the screen frantonia so this saturday oh my god tomorrow tomorrow is may the 4th star wars day may the 4th be with you so it is also my what facebook calls face versary it's my 12 year anniversary of being on Facebook. It was May the 4th of 2007. I know Facebook's gonna flash up a little thing tomorrow morning when I go on Facebook, it'll be like, congratulations, 12 years, it's your faceversary. But as long as I've been on Facebook, Frantonia and everybody, from day one, I cannot stand that poke. <laughs> right from the beginning, I would say to people, I would say, I have a zero poke policy. Don't poke me, I hate that thing. <laughs> Anyway, that was back in the day when we could like throw sheep at each other and throw cupcakes and play Farmville and <laughs> back when life was easier. <laughs> okay, friends, I could spend the whole night with you, but I must go. It's already May the 4th in Australia. Happy Star Wars Day, Anya. May the 4th be all with all of you. Many blessings, friends. I will get these slides up and we'll get some more information out to you as it comes. <laughs> Oh, that's neat. A big human race. May the 4th. That's great. 
<laughs> Have fun, Ed. Yeah. Awesome. Thanks, John. You guys are the best too. Love you. Have a great evening and afternoon or morning or whatever time it is in your part of the world. Must go. Take care. Bye-bye for now. Go check out Wave. Wave.video. Get your free account. <laughs> Thanks, Barry.